Okay, my love. So we're going to very interesting yoga. Uh, it's this mudra here. What you see here is one dot. Very simple dot. And then what you see here when this is separate, this is the eye of Horus. It also kind of represents what's called the pineal gland, gland or organ superimposed to your third eye. Now what you have here is like two of these and they're connected in one dot. Okay, and then you have this. So, what's happening now? This mudra, the architecture of it is that your nadis, your energetic channels, are literally the strings of how reality is loomed. So, the external reality is mirrored in the internal reality. And the main archetypes of the looming of the whole cosmos, as within, so without, Okay, they are, you can say 12, and then the 3. The 3 here, and it's not a linear mathematics, so it can be like said that it's 12 or 13. Okay, usually on the clock we have 12 hours. We have here 2 hands, 5 fingers each, so that these are 5 channels, okay. And then you have 2 channels from which these 5 roots or branches come out this is your left and right brain hemisphere or te eye temple okay and then you have the first channel or the very first channel that is beyond the two and this one is unmanifested so this is not a channel it is like the agency or the root cause that then dreams these two this is your creator and destroyer okay positive and negative, if you want, electric, magnetic, uh, yin and yang, and then out of out of them, then stem five. And then this iterates. Okay, now let's not blow your mind with iteration of infinite 12, or the infinite three, or that the zero is one, and the one is two, and then the three is infinite. This is as it is, but you basically are here as a looming, as a representation. So this is a quantum looming. These are vibrations that create this. Literally, if you see my shirt, you see the looming, right? But now you see the shirt, you don't see the looming. When you look inside, you can see the looming, right? So when you look inside your atoms, you can see the looming, the network. And then sometimes you have surfaces that are pre-built. Like you can use, let's say, let's say IKEA, IKEA. You get something, it's already a blueprint, it's already built, but you have parts and you just assemble it. Now you don't have to work the wood and make the parts. The parts are already made. But if you look at the parts, they all have a finer structure. Okay. So in the human, the parts are already created in the cosmos and then the human is created from these parts that are the cosmos before the parts there is instruction set for each material okay and i mean your dna and your cells and your bones and your bone marrow and your muscle and everything but also i mean the energetic tissue now let's rewind this a little bit Right here, you have the dot. The dot has no dimension. The dot really, in geometry, has no dimension. The emanation of the cosmos, it said, the Big Bang comes out of nothing, becomes space and energy, and then becomes everything. So everything originates in the dot and the dot that has no dimension, no space, no form, contains possibility for everything. Now, let's digress and just bring it out to everyday thing and then I'm going to come back into the essence and wrap up this yoga. The, your everyday functioning, you're already using pre-built panels, structures, thought forms, everything is already 
uh, away from the origination. Everything is already in the circumference where you recognize the forms and you can interact with the surfaces that are pre-built. So the other day, I was thinking in a very everyday fashion, uh, well, let me get some price adjustments for my art and then I started worrying about if people are going to be willing to uh, pay that price. But then I understood, okay, I have like a subconscious kind of like agreement that I don't want to be too uh, pushy. I need to make everybody happy, like market fit, have everybody happy so they like to pay less and I need to cater to their... But this is all... This is all not objective, this is all relative to my previous understanding. So I felt a kind of resistance if I'm going to push the price up, then I'm maybe not going... Like, I felt a resistance. Mm -hmm. So, psychoanalysis, right? You can see where the resistance is, what this resistance is, why is something making me feel bummed out or non-deserving or whatever, right? So this is your classic, you know, self, uh, you inspect yourself, you work on yourself and you analyze these ideas, these previous patterns, and then you can maybe change them. Okay. Now, instead of really going into why and the, my previous reasoning, I'm going into alpha and omega, I'm going into this point also called the zero point. Now this point, if you ponder, is in your third eye, these are your two hemispheres, okay, you can also do like this, is a illumin, illumina, illumination, this is a secret sign of Illuminati, you know. <laughs> this is like uh, when we greet each other like this, I know that you know that I know that you know that alpha is omega, that I am you. Right, because it's all Shiva wearing costumes. It's all this non-form, cosmic, unmanifest, non-form, pure consciousness, formless being, wearing infinite costumes. And the costume have two eyes, two hemispheres, right? But it's all observed from the point of infinity that has no dimension, no space, no time, no energy. But potentially it can be extrapolated like this. So you take the point, that's like it does not exist, nothing exists here, but you can still, in your imagination, you can stretch it out. And this is how holographic universe works. Everything is stretchable. So now you have to stretch your imagination to um, imagine a point that is sucking you in. And if you are doing meditation type of deal, then you can actually experience dissolution of space energy or reality construct everything can just fold into itself and then you experience yourself but then you either fold yourself into the point and stay like a point where nothing everything ceases or through that point is a wormhole where you enter into a different type of reality construct so you are here and then you shrink it to the point and then you go down there and there's another bubble there's another balloon that's just being inflated because this space is imagined this reality construct is inflated imagined from this possibility now if you know the unspeakable word that is the name of god before it had any name like joe or uh, mary or jesus or Tom or Turtle. So before this this name of this thing that is not a thing cannot be said because it cannot be described by anything in form. You have to lose form. You have to lose the mind. Lose your mind. I just lost my mind. What was I saying? <laughs> uh, okay. 
dim. Now, when we have ideas about relative world, where there is a relative subject having a relative relationship, subject, verb, object, I like to increase my pricing. Right? So we have this then relative sequence of events, which is relative because we have previously summoned into existence certain arbitrary chains, like a sequence, a chain of meaning. So the self, the subject, is the being or isness, but then all of these sequences of objects are relative, but they're kind of like energetic loomings that we now call the subconscious mind. This is just like how I feel in my body in relationship to something. Does it, does it vibrate tr like true or awkward? It's either like, yeah, or it's a cringe. Or it's a mixed feeling or like, oh, I would like to, but then I don't feel like to. See, so these are then, the filters are not coherent. And these filters are projecting the reality experience. Literally. So if you can make your slides coherent and just say, I'm choosing a sequence that makes this understanding of reality and projection of reality coherent, then you get magically a very nice manifestation result. Whatever, like you can be precise or you can be down to like blueprint it, chart it down to like a very little, if you understand all the loomings in the method, then that is manifested as your reality. Because right now, this reality you're manifesting as kind of like different screens, different layers and filters, they're all processing what you're experiencing. So I'm telling you how to harmonize this process. Lol. So you have to touch the nothing. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like you. You have. Because it's um now okay let's uh, play a game. So touching the nothing is a dissolution of your reality. Yes. So it means that the transcendence you have to be not associating yourself with any uh, paradigm of subject to object like you are alive or dead or like you are you want something you have to detach yourself from this construct okay why can't I do this okay you have to det detach yourself from this construct uh huh. You have to detach yourself from any construct in order for from your, for your awareness to be able to shift these perspectives, because right now you are in the perspective of nothing. Okay, fuck this. You are in the perspective of emptiness. You are in a perspective of non-dimensional space. You are in the perspective of you uh, uh, needing to go out and uh, you know uh, pull up find a parking space near the ATM, grab some money from the ATM, go have a sandwich, have some breakfast, and then open your laptop and then finish some work. See, I know what you're doing. <laughs> so, you are in each and every perspective, yes. But to exit this uh, immersion where you are immersed in the screen and sequences of meanings that project the appearances, then you have to twist your logic, abandon the sequence, get out of the screen 
and get into the free floating space where you can zoom in and out, where your awareness can freely zoom in and out. Feeling the empty space or no space or the singularity, the infinite white light or whatever. All of these are just part of this build, this reality construct. Or this reality construct is a part of that uh, proto-space and proto-energy, whatever you want to call it. It's all here and now. So there's no... What came before, it's all here and now. So when you are there, then you have your zero, and then you have the space and infinite energy that is at the same time empty space. It's just flip side of itself. That then creates the looming, okay? So zero is the one and two. Now when you only have zero is the one and two, then no relationship to ideas, beliefs, reality, fate, your financial situation, whatever is the nitty-gritty of this work that is happening in the complexity, all of this can be very simplified. All of this can be very simplified in a sense, I am... And then these layers that are added onto me are relative. So my clients or collectors, they don't really exist because I don't really exist as an artist or a business owner. My relationship to money also, it exists in a relative dream type of construct and then whatever we are charging for the product or service or collectors are paying for the art piece, it's also just, a pre just an assumption, as ne Neville Goddard would put it, it's, a, it's an assumption. So the assumption itself, it, it does not exist. And then the world that is manifested from that assumption, it, it does not exist as something absolute, it's all relative, it's all imaginary. So... If only the I am exists with the infinite potential to show up as isness or nothingness, which are both one and the same, then it's pretty simple from this perspective to understand that alpha is omega. My desire, let's say in this case it was charging for the art pieces like get, getting into like adding a zero literally so we're going from 10k to 100k or from 1k to 10k so just literally adding one zero to that uh price range and then the body memory feels like okay awkward because uh this is like too much money for younger me previous version of me recorded version of me so now i'm looking this previous version of me exists as an assumption. The future version of me and future clients or art collectors, they're paying this price, they also exist as an assumption. In the alpha that is omega, the expansion into all of these constructs and the non-existence of all of these constructs are one and the same. So everything is really fluid. Everything is really fluid. And so out of this isness comes a desire and it has to form a subject-to-object relationship for a desire to work, but then you understand, okay, subject, verb, object, I want to go there to get that, I am that, alpha is omega, the desire fulfilled is the same place from where desire was emanated, so you're just projecting your desire on a screen, and therefore desire appears on the screen 
because you just project, but then you insert this subtitle, like, I want to go there and do that and then get that. Now you create like a story of linear consequence and you think there are parts. There are no parts. When you imagine that, you create a journey. As you imagine that, the journey is created. So as a desire is created, the fulfillment of that desire is created. It is existing at the same time. If you just sit with the desire, you can even shortcut the journey. You don't have to have from right now to until that appears, I will like just leave it to the sequencer or the movie editor to just put it in my... You can see, move it up, move it up, move it up, move it up in the now. Move it up, make it crystallize in the now. And now that's another topic and we're going to go into kind of like fast forwarding, which is cool to, to know, understand how it works and do sometimes. So like bring something in, just imagine you have a, a like a fishing stick and then <laughs> bring that fish in. Okay, bye.